I mean, with John, it's already been a very shaky relationship yeah. in the last season. And now he's bringing in a new queen. There are all kinds of stories mm -hmm. about people who discover one day that they are princes, kings. No, I think it would be very sad. Hi, everybody. So, why do I have my headphones on? I do not need them. Hi everybody! So I started last week reading out patrons predictions for Game of Thrones season 8 for the next episode and the season and the story. I thought it was a good format. People liked it so I'm gonna do it again. In fact I like the format so much I might also do it for other stories. Hmm. Okay let's start with longtime patron Kim Cortade. There will be an outbreak of disease in King's Landing. Listen up, listen up. Kyborn says something cryptic when the three women leave Bronn's room. Poor girl, the pox will take her within the year. What pox is that? Mm. Kim says, I don't recall anything about an, an outbreak of disease in the city. What does he know? Boom. I like it. Not confirmed, but boom. Uh, Casey Coons. Casey Coons, we've had our back and forths long long time patron uh we've, we've become pen pals met in your city hello casey and he has had the temerity to say this about my predictions for the season he says that my predictions are let me quote wrong the goal the goal okay so let me say this about his prediction that little finger is alive <laughs> 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 He's had that prediction after last uh, season's, season's finale. Okay, whatever. But he still thinks it might happen. No, 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 no. So, you remember when Stannis died? And we didn't see him dying, actually. And people said, no, no, he can't be dead. They'll bring him back, they'll bring him back, because that's too weird. And I was like, no, they're not dead. D and D, they're not that good. That death kind of sucked. And Littlefinger again, Littlefinger's death here also kind of sucked. So I think people assume that since that death scene sucked, then he must still be alive. And I say, no, it sucked because they are not that good. Boom, Casey. Brian C. Morris, another long-time patron. Hello, Brian. Mm. Harry Strickland from the Golden Company is Jack and Hagar. <laughs> Many people can be Jack and Hagar and faceless men. When things look bleak for the northern two forces, boom, face removal. Dun, dun, dun. Um, Anke, boom, from Holland. We met in, we met in Amsterdam. Hello, Anke. Anke thinks that it is clear that they, them, here, <laughs> they are trying to make us hate Daenerys this season, maybe to prop up Sansa, hmm, just like for us to care for her before she becomes queen, boom, queen. But Anke does think that since Daenerys is a good person, she will sacrifice, she will sacrifice either herself or her drag. Brandon Pollard. Boom. Hello, Brandon. He thinks that Tyrion and Jaime will both end up supporting Sansa as the best possible ruler of Westeros. One or both of them will be the ones to ultimately convince her she should be queen. Ooh, so they will convince her. I like it. I like it. Maybe she just needs a nudge. A nudge. Boom. Good stuff, Brandon, especially because it supports all of my previous predictions, which makes you a very smart man. Bridget Hall. Hello, Bridget. Ooh, okay, so this is for Jamie and Bran. She thinks that Bran will implore Jamie to keep their window pushing episode a secret. So my prediction before the season was that Bran will not say anything to anyone about the whole pushing thing and I th and I thought that Jamie will confess just to show that he's uh, whatever truthful and loyal and honest Bridget goes further and says that Bran will tell him don't tell anybody about it because John and Sansa and most of the other Northern northerners they will not like you the northerners are weird they're not only a little bit racist 
Do you think it's an accident that they gave the only black people in this episode the evil eye? Mm -hmm. But they also have a thing against pushing children out of windows. Barbarians! Barbarians! It's okay, okay. Nicole Chastain, boom, a returning patron. Hello, Nicole. Glad to have you back. In the trailer for the episode 2, we see Daenerys coming on down pretty hard on Jamie for killing her father. Okay. Didn't you kill the father of another person who's, who's sitting right there? Hmm? Dracarys. Maybe Sam will have something to say about that. Flavio Botello. Hello, Flavio. Hmm. He says, imagine Sansa's queen, Tyrion as the queen's hand. Both fake marriages. Flavio thinks that they will have children. No, she's not gonna marry anyone. Boom. New patron, hello, Beatrice Carvalho Enriquez from Brazil, I hope I pronounced your name correctly. She thinks that Bran will tell everybody that Jamie killed the Mad King because he was going to burn them all, burn them all, and then that will change a little bit the way that the Northerners uh, treat him. Hmm. And then she adds that she can kind of see Sansa taking Jamie's side just to spy Danny. Boom. What else? What? Steven Fowler. It's Steven, right? That's how you pronounce your name? Steven? Stefan? Long time patron. Hello. <gasps> okay, okay, okay. Right after the first paragraph, he has this uh, line that always inspires confidence in the prediction. Hear me out. Hear me out. Cersei being selfish is an excellent battlefield and long-term strategy, while Daenerys is in the north's plan of defeating the army of the dead way up north is a terrible plan and may very probably make the Night King more powerful than he already is. Just hear him out. Hear him out. <laughs> oh. <gasps> Ooh. No. Wow. No. Okay. So he thinks because the north is scarcely populated and huge, it's very hard to defend it. So it doesn't make any sense to meet them on the battle. Right. So it's gonna be like whatever field army against field army, the Thraki, Ansali, everybody here, zombies over there. Boom. Oh, right. <laughs> I even thought of that. Every. <laughs> Every soldier that the bad people monsters kill, he just turns around and becomes another soldier for the dead army. Oof. Okay, okay, boom. Stephen, Stephen, Mr. Fowler, Mr. Fowler, boom. I didn't know. That. I didn't think about that. I think this is for me. Boom. Call it confirmed that it will not end with a battle, with a regular battle. It will end with something magical, super magical, or with a truce, or with understanding what they want to do. Boom, you nailed it. You nailed it. Right, and uh, Cersei could choke them up in the, in the neck. This is what's called in the neck. Ooh, maybe that's uh, how she's going to get choked in the prophecy. Hmm. So, like, destroying whatever, scorch earth, destroying bridges, that's like a World War II military operation to prevent the Germans. And my apologies to all the Germans viewers. And then, Mr. Fowler here has some more history. William of Orange, at 22, was facing down the army of France led by a man calling himself the Sun King and decided to just flood the lowlands where the superior army got there and used the time it gained to create defenses. Oof. I love my patrons. I have the smartest patrons ever. And it's not that the channel attracts smart patrons. It's just the moment that they become patrons, boom, they just become smart. It's incredible. It's incredible. You should try it. You should try it. I like it very much, Mr. Fowler. Yuta Piveka. Yuta or oh, Juta? Juta. Probably Juta. Sorry. Boom. We talked uh, in uh, one of our Hangout videos. Hello, Ms. Piveka. Basically, each of the main characters, the Starks and this Lady Targaryen, they get what they want, but their dreams become nightmares. So Sansa marries a beautiful prince. Arya wants to be a fighter, turns into an assassin. 
Rob dies because he's gullible, Brand's adventures make him, make him into a semi-human cripple. I think that is a derogative term for Three-Eyed Ravens, uh, Miss Biveka. And Daenerys finally comes home, only to find out that it is not home at all. Ooh, okay, okay, okay. So she then goes into Sansa losing a lady, which uh, we agree that has some significance because she's the first one to lose her magical animal. She's just by herself, her wits. She learns how to compromise. She learns how to curtsy in a good way, how to be courteous and stay alive. Right? So she's not threatening, which I think will be very important when the decision will come. Who will be the top dog or the guess of the realm? Sansa is a human, while Jon is a white. But it's too late for them as a romantic couple. It always was. I don't see this. I don't see this at all. At all. I don't know. Is she into people who are dead? I don't know. I don't wanna... I'm not saying that it's like a, like a policy for me. But ladies, if you were dead once, then... I don't know. I don't know. Just... Not saying you should be discriminated against, but just like I'm not uh, romantically interested. So all formerly dead women, please stop harassing me in the comments. Uncool. Uncool. Ooh, and then she thinks that they will they will realize their mutual feelings only for the uh, happiness to turn into ashes in their mouth, realizing that John is a zombie. Ooh. Maybe they will outlaw zombie marriage over there. Ay, ay, ay. Sad. Very sad. She thinks that the last scene will be Queen Sansa visiting John's grave in the crypts of Winterfell. Someone asking, why did you bury him here? Her answer, he was a Stark of Winterfell. That's where he belongs. That's beautiful, but I don't think so. Jessica, new patron. Hello. She thinks that... Little Sam is highly significant as little brother to most of the... Well, ah, ooh, 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 wow, 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 wow. Okay, so little Sam is the little brother of most of the White Walkers. Dang, dang, I didn't think about that. His kidnapping is perhaps a great part of the Night King's motivation. <gasps> Maybe he wants the baby that was stolen from him. <sighs> wow. <laughs> Guys, you have some good predictions, except the ones that are not that good. Casey, I'm looking at you. Let it go, little finger is dead. He is dead. Okay, moving on, moving on. Another long-time patron, Dana Born. Boom, hello, Dana. Dana thinks that it will be Brienne who will stand up for Jamie because she loves him. And that she will be instrumental in diffusing the tense situation between Daenerys, Mad Dog Targaryen, and Jaime, Sister Fornicator Lannister. Well, she won't be able to <laughs> get on his case about that since she's fornicating with her nephew. And then Dana thinks that one of the dragons will kill a little boy and that she will not care and that will be the start of people turning on her. And she agrees that Sansa is in love with John. I could not disagree more, Dana, sorry. I just don't see it not in the script and not in the way that the actors play. I would be shocked, shocked if that was true. Nets, cuts, a long time patron, friendly show. Always has good stuff. Episode 2 will develop as a set piece trial of Jamie for betraying the Mad King and for throwing Brand out of a tower. He'll get off on both counts. It's okay to murder the Mad King because for some reason we don't like people who want to burn King's Landing. Hmm. He'll get off on the Bran count because Bran will point out that Jamie didn't throw him out the window for no reason. No, it's one of the things we do for love. Haven't we all? thrown people out the window for love. Come on, come on, let's not judge him. We who live in glass houses. But all these deliberations will be interrupted by the approach of the army of the dead. Avi 
Korchak, one of my favorite patrons, boom, lives in Jerusalem, we've met a few times. He thinks that there will be four battles between the living and the dead. The living will lose three, win one. And he thinks that either John will kill Daenerys or Daenerys will kill John. He prefers that John will kill Daenerys, knowing full well that she is pregnant with his child. Ugh. You are cruel, Avi. You are cruel. Another prediction. Okay, last but, lo- but not least by Anone13. The living would lose the Battle of Winterfell. The reason for that is that you don't win against the White Walkers in a defensive battle. They have a lot more cannon fodder. The only ones worth killing are the White Walkers, not the Whites. And if the White Walkers don't have enough Whites, they can always raise some new ones. And then a second battle would take place where Robert won his crown, the trident. Okay. Okay. A valley. Okay. 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 You know, topo- topography and stuff. Yeah. Okay. 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 This is the end of the world. Judgment Day. The war of the sons of light against the sons of darkness. Ragnarok. Apocalypse. Armageddon. The end is nigh. And he said Armageddon, right? Har Megiddo. The Mount of Megiddo in Hebrew. In uh, Emek Israel, Jezreel Valley, and that's pretty close where he's from. Where he's from? Boom! Hide there. And he has a list of battles that were fought there. That were final battles. Okay, 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 okay. Boom. Okay, so but before we say goodbye, I want to let Val from Because of Geek tell you all about her chapter in our collaborative book, The Thrones Effect: How Game of Thrones conquered pop culture it's a collaboration with eight other youtubers including myself and two of god academy sorry god academy's collaborators noga and theo i was also the editor of this book got everybody together and val has the third chapter it's about the independent media side of game of thrones but i'll let her give you more information Hey guys, you might know me already. My name is Val and I run the channel Because Geek. I wrote the third chapter in this awesome book, which is titled When Game of Thrones Spoilers and Sleuths to Cover Game of Thrones, since my channel is basically all about that. In this chapter, I take you on a journey through history, starting from the end of season 5 in 2015 until now. I tell you the whole story of how Game of Thrones filming news became a phenomenon and how it created a huge community of fans who were ravenous about spoilers and leaks. I also talk about how that community, with its sleuths, had a huge impact on the show, sprinkled here and there with some of my own story of how I became a Game of Thrones sleuth. And at the end of the chapter, I included a message that I haven't said in any video yet. I can't tell you what it is, you're gonna have to buy the book to find out. But yeah, thank you guys so much in advance to all of you who decide to buy this book. We put a lot of effort into it, and I really hope you enjoy it. It's a really, really good read. I highly recommend it, not only because I'm in the book, I've read her chapter several times. It's a great chapter. So the link is in the description for the ebook coming up on Audible. The audiobook, it will take some time. And also the print, the physical book, hard copy also would take a little bit more time. But if, if you don't want to wait, if you want to make the most out of Game of Thrones as it is right now, the link is right there. So that's it for now. I'll post another similar video next week. So if you want to participate in this video, patreon.com slash Academy. Thank you, patrons, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Thank you for watching that video. I hope you enjoyed it. You know what I hear most often from new patrons coming into our Patreon page? is that they've been enjoying God Academy videos for a long time and that they're happy that they finally can support the channel. So you too can be happy. Happiness is just around the corner. It's on patreon.com slash God Academy. Bliss. Just one cup of coffee a month. Come on. I like coffee.